City Church. I can hear a few of you out there. <laughs> Take a look around and find someone that you can wave to or smile at. Tell them how good it is to be in the house tonight at our Life Night service. Welcome to those that are watching with us online as well. We're so grateful to have the technology to be able to be with you um, right at home tonight. And if you've never connected with us through text message, um, please text the word CONNECT to the number 585-487-8100. That way you'll be able to stay updated on events that we have going on around here at City Church. I love the words that Paul speaks in Colossians 1. Starting in verse 9, it says, So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. I pray that over this house tonight. I pray specifically for a person for, we're all inheritance of God's great treasures um, while we're here on the earth, but more so when we get all to heaven together. Let's pray tonight. Thank you for your presence here, Lord. Thank you that we can come before you, Lord, and worship you. Praise your name, Lord. You're so good to us. Thank you for being our Father, Lord, for being our healer, our redeemer. Thank you for rescuing us. I pray that you meet every need in the house tonight, Lord. Just touch every heart and every life that's here. Do a great work. Let your spirit flow throughout this service, Lord, in the way that you'd have it to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord tonight as we worship. Miracles, when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. And your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. And your voice is calling me out. And right now, I know you're able. Oh, 
you would have your way in such a beautiful way we sent you now we just say we're thankful that we're two or three are gathered there you show up and command a blessing father we thank you for that in this place tonight thank you for your people tonight that have gathered in your name and in your name we pray in jesus name amen amen would you bless somebody bigger on yeah give the lord a praise would you bless somebody big around you? Smile at them, and then you may be seated in his house tonight.
How many of you wanted to dance when you heard that music? Tell the truth tonight, yeah. Ron raised his hand. Well, Tuesday night was a wonderful, yeah, we can't dance like Erin can dance and her team, but yeah, Ron definitely can, but you know, you can feel it, right? And uh, Tuesday night was a wonderful night of evangelism and outreach in the city of Batavia, and God's kingdom was able to influence a community. God's kingdom, God's people were used to bless the community, to be a part of, of what God is doing on the south side of Batavia. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time. God will create opportunities for, for his mission, for his ministry to go forth. And that's what happened on Tuesday night. And I want to talk about that word influence just for a second. We had influence on that community in that moment. And, and God just opened that door again this year. But I want to back up and I want to share with you just for a second. Because as I begin to contemplate this event and, and how it came together and how it unfolded. Actually, it'll be three years ago now. And I want to share that with you because I want to encourage you that you have influence. You might say, Ryan, I, I don't have a title. I, I, I'm i not that important. I, 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 I'm not sure how I influence. I want you to know tonight, tell your neighbor, I have influence. Tell your neighbor that. Three years ago, I got a phone call on a day kind of like today. And it was, at the time, Chief Todd Crossett that had called me. Well, he's since retired. And Todd called me and he said, hey, we've been doing this event We've, we've, we've called it uh, a certain thing. We've had it in a certain neighborhood. It's really never taken off the way we wanted it to. And I was just wondering if you guys would consider having this event right at the church. And I was like, yes and when? When are we doing this? And God began to open door after door after door. And this year was so much larger than our first year doing it. But I want to say this to you, that... As Todd served the community as the police chief, he used his influence to further the gospel. And I want to say to you tonight, you say, again, you say, Ryan, I, I don't have that type of influence. I want you to think about the influence that you do have. I want you to think about the job that you have in, in your workplace, the influence that God has given you in that workplace to see the gospel done. Hector, I thought of you today, you share that wonderful story that sticks with me at the DMV and, and your coworkers asking you to pray. We all have those opportunities. You also have an opportunity to give and use your influence financially to make events like that happen. That doesn't just happen. There is a, so many working parts. Aaron's over there like, yeah, because she did most of it. Amen. And we need to be able to employ people like Aaron. Amen. Amen. So you do have influence. This morning in our Bible reading plan, I thought it was so funny the way God is. In Isaiah 30, 38, there's this story about this king who's got, he's got influence, he's got power, he's got authority, and, and God speaks to the prophet in this portion of scripture, and he says, I want you to go talk to the king. I want you to go have a conversation with him and let him know his days are over. He's going to die. He's, his, his, his time on this earth has come to an end. And the prophet goes to the king. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that type of, that type of information, taking it to a person of authority and to a person of power? And in those days, a person that could have you killed. Can you imagine? He takes this, he takes this information through the influence that God has given him, through the authority that God has given him. He shares this piece of information with the king, and the king does the only thing that he knows how to do. He goes to another th authority. He goes to God himself, and he leans on the relationship and the past relationship and the influence that he has with God, and he begins to beg God. The scripture depicts it. And he begins to use his influence with God to change not only his life, but the lives of the people around him. 
I want to tell you tonight, you might say, well, you know, tonight's another night. I, it's going to be, it's going to be nice. It's going to be pretty. But I want you to know two things tonight that you have influence and that God wants to speak and use you in a particular way to do his will, not to do your will. And can you imagine this king when he gets this word and God literally changes his mind. He changes his mind and he gives him additional years. And I want to speak over you tonight that as you pray and as you seek God, as you come out on nights like tonight, you change the course of your history. You you change you change the destiny you change the future that you could have but you don't have anymore. God is working and doing something so beautiful in your life. So I want to encourage you tonight. You have influence. You have influence. You have power. You have authority from heaven. Some of you are blocking me out right now because you said, man, I've tried that before and it just, it didn't work out the way I thought it would and I got embarrassed. You have authority and power from heaven to do the will of the Father. And I want you to know tonight, as you give, you help move the mission forward. You know how to give. You help move that mission forward. You help make nights like tonight possible. You help the gospel go forward, not only on Tuesday nights, but on every every night we do the work of the gospel. And almost every day there's something going on at City Church where people can connect and be a part. Amen tonight? I want to tell you one more time. You have influence God's hand is on you in a particular way. If you believe that, lift your hand tonight. Father, I pray for each one tonight in this place. I pray that your word would be spoke with clarity and with power. Every distraction, every preconceived idea. Father, I pray by the working of your Holy Spirit that you'd settle it in this moment. And God, that your will would be done tonight. Your voice would be heard. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, would you say amen? Amen. Amen. Great word tonight. How many of you have come expecting from God tonight? I'm going to say that one more time because you need to, maybe you need to stand up and turn around a little bit. Maybe just kind of get your mind off the news and whatever. How many of you have come expecting tonight? Amen. Good. Because if you don't expect something, Nothing will happen. Did you hear that? I said, if you don't expect something, nothing will happen. You have to believe in order to receive. I've put a demand on God. I do every day. <laughs> With, but I, I ask him, the Lord spoke to my heart early this morning that I felt tonight was not only going to be a turning point in the church, but it's going to be a turning point in somebody's life, but you have to believe it and receive it right now. You have to receive it before anything comes. Open up your heart, open up your life tonight. Get rid of any preconceived idea, just is what Pastor Ryan said. Don't let any distraction take away your attention tonight. This is your time. Everybody say that, say, this is my time. Say like, say with some bombast and I say, this is my time. I'm going to receive something great in the name of Jesus. Come on, what we do on Thursday nights, I love for people to tell me afterwards that I've had so many say, Pastor Marty, you made me feel a little uncomfortable while you were introducing me. I want you to make our guests feel a little uncomfortable. I want you to jump up on your feet tonight. I want you to give these people the greatest welcome. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together. Come on. You can do better than that. Where's my woo-hoo crowd? Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Batavia, hello. Good evening. Mission accomplished. I was uncomfortable. But thank you. It's so good to be here tonight. Uh, Barbie and I are thrilled to be with you. And I believe I have a word for you tonight. How many of you are ready to hear what God has in store? So tonight I'm going to actually, you know, first of all, worship team, let's thank God for the worship team. Hallelujah. 
I love uh, being ushered into the presence of God, and the worship team ushered us in tonight to the presence of the Lord. You know, we got to prepare our hearts to receive what God is going to share with us. And, you know, during worship, I was standing over there, and suddenly it's like I kind of went into this vision, and uh, I'm, I'm seeing from, like, above down, and I'm seeing an enormous footprint. And we were in the middle of this enormous footprint, and the Lord was just smiling over that. And I said, God, what, what am I looking at? And, and he said, this is how I'm looking at this ministry. You have left an enormous footprint in this community. You've allowed God to use you to leave an enormous footprint. So the Lord smiles over you. And actually, I want to say to you, City Church, what I heard the Lord saying tonight is do not be concerned about the budget. Do not be concerned about the finances. I'm actually going to increase your outreach, says the Spirit of God. So I release that to you tonight, and the Lord says, I'm going to increase your budget for outreach because this is me doing it. It's not man. God says, don't hold back. Don't shrink back, but allow me to do above and beyond what you could ask or think. Do you say amen to that? Amen. There you go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to share with you a word that has been stirring in me. It's been boiling in me. And it's a word for the body of Christ. I will say, um, as time has gone on this year, God has continued to add pieces to it. But this word is straight from the throne for you. And I want to talk to you about a word that in church, it could be a dirty word. In church, it could be a word that we are afraid of, but we shouldn't be. I want to talk to you about the word new. The word N E W new. See, because sometimes we don't like the new. We like things just the way they are. Leave it alone. I'm happy in the third row on the fourth seat. God bless you, whoever's in the third row on the fourth seat. I'm not picking on anybody, but what I'm saying, let me see, one, two, three. It's time for us to emerge in the new. Everyone in this room has prophetic words. Everyone in this room has a godly destiny. Because when God created you, he put destiny in you. There's a dream that God has about you. And when he saw you in eternity, he had a dream and put you on the earth to fulfill that dream and gave you everything you need to fulfill it. But in order for that to come to pass, first of all, I want you to know God doesn't change his mind. The callings of God are irrevocable. What that means is just because you had a bad day, just because you went home and kicked the cat doesn't mean that God changed his mind about you. God saw you. He destined his dream over your life. And he doesn't change his mind. However, there is work that we have to do. You're looking around saying, where's the ministry God said I had? Where, where's that prophetic word? Where's that promise? I, I, I saw it in scripture. I've been declaring scripture. I've been praying. Prophetic words spoken over my life. Well, where is it? Has God changed his mind about me? No. Absolutely not. God has not changed his mind for you. Everyone here tonight, I want you to know, God is for you. He's on your side. He's in your corner with great plans in store for you that have not changed. However, the reason why some things have not come to pass is because you have not done your part. Tonight, I want to talk to you about your job description. The new has to come out, but God's already set it in motion on his end, and he's waiting for you. You're not waiting for God. He's waiting for you. What must we do so that all these beautiful promises that we've heard from, that we're waiting on from God, what must we do so that all of this begins to become a reality in our lives? Well, there's work that we have to do, and let's, let's share what that is. Tonight we were singing, if you want my heart, you can have it. Doesn't he deserve our heart? If you want my family, you could have it. Doesn't he deserve that? Doesn't he deserve that we give him everything? He deserves it. So if he deserves all that, there are some things that we should do because he deserves it. Tonight, we're going to talk about what is God waiting for you to do? Let's change that slide. First of all, I love showing this picture. This is what God does behind your back. 
Every time you start taking steps of faith and moving forward, you know what God does? He goes behind you and boom, 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 boom. He starts ripping up old things behind you. Why? He doesn't want you to go back to your old comfort zone. So every time you say, I can't do it, I can't do it. You know what? In Jesus' name, I'm going to do it. And you step out and you do something in faith. The Spirit of God goes behind you and rips up that old place you used to hide in. So that when you try to go hide back in that little place, you realize where to go. It's gone. The Holy Spirit will always work on your life to move you into the new thing of God. Always. So as you are moving, and sometimes we take baby steps, you know, God will work with you. But if you take a baby step in faith, God's going to move with you to that new level and destroy that other place you were at. That's a good picture. Take a picture on your camera. Because that is exactly prophetically what happens when you begin to step forward. God doesn't allow you to step forward and leave those places intact so you can go back and hide again. He wants you to keep going from glory to glory. Yesterday's glory was good, wasn't it? But guess what? It's gone. There's a new glory. And God doesn't want you reveling in the old glory without moving into the new thing that he has for you. How wonderful that God never runs out you know that? He doesn't run out of stuff. I remember when I first got saved, I was 16. He, he radically saved my life that I thought, I thought church was so boring. I grew up in church. I fell asleep in church as a kid. I thought church was so boring. But I, he radically saved me. So I said, Lord, I love you and I want to give my whole life to you. I, I accept the call that you have on my life. I will sit in church and be bored. That's what I thought my call was. 16 years old, I gave up partying, I gave up all that stuff to sit in a building, under, barely understanding what was going on, and I thought that's what it was. I had no understanding. I didn't know at the time that God was about to rock my world. Sitting in church as a kid, I didn't, I didn't get it. I, my heart wasn't. But then giving my life to the Lord, all of a sudden I started hearing the word. I started encountering God, and it was anything but boring. It began my journey of getting to know the Lord. So God is going behind you, ripping up old concepts to launch you into the new. And he says to you, I want you to trust me. I've got things ahead that you've not even seen yet. I've got things for you. I've got packages, gifts for you to open, things for you to, anointings for you to step into that you have not even perceived yet. The Lord never runs out of his plan for our lives. It always gets better and better and better and better. And the waters get deeper and deeper. And the anointing gets stronger and sharper. And that's why he says, keep moving forward. Let's go to the next slide. And now we have to understand that time flies by. But as time flies by, see, we have got to repent. I think, first of all, as, a, as, a, as the body of Christ that we have looked at time in the wrong way. I think that we've had a secular view of time. We're getting, time is flying by. I'm getting older. My best years were behind me. You know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about. You know how the world has that interaction with time. It's just, we're getting older. We're, you know, I'm going to retire. There's nothing else for me to do. And listen, that is not how God has established time. And he wants us, first of all, to get a new understanding of time. Here on the earth, if we don't do this, if we don't divorce a secular view of time, what will end up happening is, uh, as we get older, we start thinking there's nothing left for us to do. That is a lie from the pit of hell. While there is air in your lungs, there's a praise in your mouth, and there's something for you to do to extend the kingdom of heaven. Caleb was 80, and he said, give me my mountain. Okay? So we've got to once again realize that in the kingdom of heaven, time doesn't have that secular view of, I'm getting older, I'm getting older, I'm getting older, boom, I'm done, I'm gone, it's over. No. In the kingdom of heaven, as we, as time progresses, we don't lose, I just turned 50, by the way. Come on. Jubilee year. I'm in my jubilee year. As I turned 50, I didn't lose what I had at 49. It just got better. I'm gaining in wisdom. I'm gaining an experience. You know how it is when you get, the older you get, you look back. I remember when I was 20-something, I thought I knew it all. The older you get, you realize how much you have to learn. 
Everything begins to shift. And in the kingdom of heaven, you don't lose what you had back there, but God begins to advance you in your knowledge, advance you in your wisdom, advance you in your destiny. And there never comes a season where God has nothing for you to do. There is no such thing. It just gets better and better and better. So actually, there in Hebraic culture, there was an honoring with age. There was an honoring. There was a seeking out of wisdom, of seeking out the, the, uh, the confirmation, the affirmation of the elders. That meant something. And I think that we have to get back to that place of understanding that in time, so long as we're here on the earth, we can continue to progress in God's plan for us and not leave anything on the table, but take all the blessings that God has in store for us. So this is how in the world we view time, just the clock, chirals, no, I'm sorry, chronos time. That's the Greek word that just means minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, time is flying by. But in Hebraic culture, really, they viewed time like an ascending staircase. Every year, you're kind of at, a, at the landing of the new, uh, you're at the new landing. And then as the year go on, you grow, you ascend in the glory of the Lord to a new landing, to a new level. You've been promoted to another level. So it's time for us to view time differently. God is constantly, when you're walking and you're serving the Lord, he's promoting you, promoting you, promoting you, promoting you. You're walking into greater and greater and greater and greater blessings. And that's how it should be. Our family should see us continually ascending and ascending and ascending and ascending in the glory of God, in the blessings of God. That's how God has established it. So tonight we're going to start off with what must we do? First of all, we've got to view time correctly. And we've got to see that God has a plan for you. So everybody who, you know, you're over 50, you're over 60, you're over 70, and you think you're disqualified, I've got news for you. Get back in the game. God's got a great plan in store for you. Let's, let's shift to the next one. Tonight, as we talk about what must we do, I want to explain a concept. Before we get into the, I have four points to share with you tonight. I gotta explain this to you. Not many, be, not many people see this nor understand it. Let's go, let's go back a slide, please. Oh, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the one that jumped ahead. Oh, that's interesting. I, okay, yes, let's go up, let's go forward, and let's leave it there. Let me, let, me just, let me explain something. You are a portal. Do you know what that means? That means that you are a gateway from the spirit realm into the earth realm. Whether you know this or not, now even unbelievers in the world, every person, because we have a spirit, soul, and a body, every person has that gateway in their lives to be in touch with the spirit realm and be in touch with the earth realm. So because of that, a lot of what goes on in the spirit realm can communicate with us. We can either agree with it or not, and if we agree with it, we manifest it into the earth. What am I saying? Luke 6, 45. Listen carefully. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure in his heart, brings forth evil things. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. There's some things we need to change to move into the new, but you have to understand the reason why God wants us to change these things, it's because you are a portal. And right now in your life, whether you know it or not, you're manifesting something into the earth from the spirit realm. You are, and so am I. And all we have to do is look at our lives and look to the good, the bad, the ugly, and realize, wow, where did that come from? It all started in us as a thought. And from there, we manifested something good in our lives or something evil. We have to know this. When we put on the news and we hear that somebody, a parent, killed their child, which unfortunately those things happen, do you think that just happened because something was wrong with the individual? No. This individual was in touch with the spirit realm. 
The enemy comes to st steal, kill, and destroy. And it always starts with the spirit realm trying to gain access of this person on the earth to move through that person. Thank God we're in Christ and we have the word of God. Because when those things come to us, we can shut them down. We know they're from the enemy. But sometimes God is trying to get a, a thought to you. God is trying to get you to cooperate with him to release something good in your life. You are a portal. You're a gate. You're a doorway. In the spirit realm, there's a war over you because heaven and hell wants to express itself through you. What are you manifesting? What is it that you're bringing forth? Would, that's why it says that we are able to understand where a person stands with the fruit that they give. Okay? So now that we know that we're a portal, let's go over to, let's, I, I want to show you this slide. This is how you produce. There's the, did you get that? There we are. That's a little out of alignment, but there's heaven, there's hell. These are two kingdoms fighting in the spirit realm to express itself through you. God wants you to love people. God wants you to be a blessing. And the Lord is constantly speaking to you uh, to, to put people in your heart, to get you to pray for people, to get you to love people. He wants to manifest through you. Hell is over here trying to get you to curse people, trying to get you to hate people, trying to get you to not forgive people. And when they cut you off in traffic, you know what he's trying to get you to do. And there's a war over your life. Heaven wants to express itself through you. Hell wants to express itself through you. Why? Because God gave us the ability to express on the earth. You are a gateway. You have to know that. You have to know the warfare that's going on over your life. Because you are a tree that produces fruit. What kind of fruit are you going to produce? It's time for you to begin to move in the new. God has great things. And the reason why it hasn't produced yet is because you've got to change a few things to align with him and only let him express through you. Does that make sense? God wants to release vision, ministry, ideas, finances, solutions, inventions, and so on. And so he wants to give you books to write. He wants to give you things to do. He wants you uh, to pray for families. He wants you to take groceries to the family down the street that needs help. But it's going to take us to be aligned with him and know his thoughts so that he can produce through us. Heaven and hell are fighting to capture your imagination to capture your thoughts, to capture your belief, and eventually to capture your words. Because you are a tree. And you produce. Since you were a child, you've been producing. And all you have to do is review your life and look at what have I produced on the earth. And I think all of us and any of us, we've produced some good things and some evil things that we have to admit. But we can make a decision to align with God Say, God, I will only align with what you're saying and move with what you're saying. And we can be faster and quicker to shut down everything that comes from the evil one so hell is not expressing itself through us. We had a regional meeting this past weekend in Rochester, New York. A great crowd. We had a great crowd. 99.9% .9 of the people blessed. At the end of the event, oh, it was so powerful. Thank you. And we had one young girl there who we were praying for her, but uh, something was wrong with her. She was upset at something, and man, she's back there cussing up a storm. Upset, something didn't happen the way she wanted, and she's throwing her phone on the ground, and she's, and I'm thinking, this person needs the Lord, because this, this is a person who God loves. This is a person who God has plans for. He's got better things than that for this person. But in this moment, this person is aligned with the evil thoughts that the spirit realm is putting in her life. Let's go to the next one. Let's talk about change. Oh, we've got to change. We've got to get better at producing. We've got to give God the fruit he deserves. He deserves our heart. He deserves our worship. He deserves all of it. He deserves good fruit. I think that's the reason why Jesus showed up to the fig tree. He was hungry for figs. I always wondered why it said he, was, he went to it. 
knowing the Bible says it was not the season yet for figs, but the tree was filled with leaves. It was kind of displaying itself incorrectly, kind of saying, "We're re- this tree's ready. And Jesus went to get figs off of that tree, right? And actually the Bible says, and Jesus answered the tree. Isn't that interesting? Do you ever read that? Jesus answered the tree. So in other words, he must have heard something in the spirit from that tree saying, I've got figs. Because it says Jesus went and answered the tree and said, let no one ever eat from you again. Jesus cursed that tree for not having fruit. We've got to get better at producing the fruit that God wants. But it's going to take us to change. Everybody say that word change. Change. Ouch, I know that hurt. Let me drink some water. We've got to change into the new. There's some work that we have to do to be a better tree, to give God what he deserves, to produce fruit that expand and advances the kingdom of heaven, to, to produce fruit that doesn't glorify the devil, that doesn't glorify darkness. And let's be honest, sometimes as believers, we give terrible witness Because one moment we're Christians and the next moment somebody got us mad and boom, all those thoughts the enemy put on us, there we are. We're releasing all of it and bad witness. We've got to change because God is looking for something from you. He's looking for all the things we said. You deserve my heart. You deserve my worship. You deserve my praise. And when we align with him, he can speak clearly through us. Here's what I want you to do. Yes, Father, I'll do that. And now we're giving good fruit. Now we're moving in the new. We're moving in our new identity. Sometimes we're sitting in church. We refuse to change. We're still those bugs. We refuse to let that cocoon take us. We refuse to enter into the transformation process. We're fighting it. We're refusing it because this is who I am. Nobody can tell me anything. I've met so many people. I love God, but I don't know about, I don't trust these pastors. They better not tell me nothing. I'm like this. I'll give them a piece of my mind. It's like the faster you let that cocoon get a hold of you, the faster you let the Spirit of God put you through a transformation process, the faster you emerge into the new, the faster you start producing good fruit. You can fight change, but the only miserable miserable one is going to be you. God's got more for you, but you've got to want to change and shift into the new identity. We all come into the kingdom of God. We all have attitude problems. We all, some of us knew how to throw hands back in the street, right? I've heard that. Well, you didn't know who I was before Jesus. I mean, they used to call me Big Joe. I I was Big Joe. I I, I throw hands. One phone call. I got four people right here and they got my back. You know, we we throw down. I said, well, are you Big Joe or are you New Joe? Which one are you? You got to make up your mind. Are you who you were back there or are you choosing to be the new person in Christ? God wants fruit, good fruit. We've got to shift and change and metamorphose into the new. Let's go to the next one. Remember, because God has a dream for you, you'll never accomplish that dream if you don't change, if if you don't stop being Big Joe. You can't accomplish the dream being Big Joe. You've got to let that person that God is calling you to be, to metamorphose and shift and change into the new and begin to come out and express itself. Because then you can partner with God in a new way. It gets easier to do what God tells you to do. Before I knew Christ, oh man, it was so hard to humble myself. I was so arrogant and prideful. Thank God for Christ because now going through that change and God says, go humble yourself. To, yes, Lord, I'll do it. It's easier to walk with God when you allow the change so that uh, the change to take place so that you could fulfill the dream God has for you. This lady, I remember when I first got saved, she wouldn't leave me alone. Every time I turned around and went somewhere, there she was. Hey, Hector, did God talk to you yet? Because you got a prophetic gift. You got to know that you're prophetic. I was like, what? Woman, leave me alone. I had no idea what she was talking about. She wouldn't leave me alone. I had no idea. I didn't know God had a dream for me. I had no idea. It took me a while to kind of stumble across what God had deposited in me. But back then, I didn't know. But now, beginning to understand, I was like, wow, God had something in store for me even before I understood it and knew it. Same for you. God has a dream for you, and I promise you, you've not seen the the fullness of it. 
because you're still alive here on the earth. And as we're alive, we go from glory to glory. It gets better and better and better and better. I've been in ministry for a long time. And guess what? When I first started prophesying, oh, that was good. That was fun. But now watch out. And I expect that with every passing year, as I'm promoted in the spirit, it gets better and better. So we've got to change to step into the fullness. Okay, what is it, Hector? What are the things that we have to do? How do we change so we produce better fruit? Let's start with the first one, please. One, let's go to the next slide. You've got to shed and change your old imagination. What does that have to do with it? Oh, it has everything to do with it. Because some of you have a picture of yourself defeated, a victim, a nobody. You were in drugs, so you could never be no one. God can't use you. You're disqualified. You're the youngest one in your family. You don't have a college education. And some of you, in your imagination, you've played that movie so much. Satan has had you watching that movie in that little demonic movie theater, and you've been watching it over and over and over. And in your imagination, that's how you see yourself. How can you produce good fruit when you have no esteem in Christ? That's why the word says in Ephesians 3.20, you've got to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought, to the obedience of Christ. Code. If that movie Satan is playing for you, if that picture that you're seeing about yourself is still hanging in the walls of your heart and it doesn't agree with what God says about you, it's time to change the picture. It's time to take off the movie. Oh, I used to watch a movie called Hector the Victim. Part one, two, three, four, and I was the star actor in the role. Had popcorn and everything. I used to like that movie. It... it, it it pleased me. It, gave me. it helped me stay selfish and focus on what people did to me and stay in a place of victimhood. And I had pictures, posters walled all around my heart of, of, of the victim that I was. And folks, I went through stuff like anyone else, you know, but we hang on to that and we allow those pictures to stay up there. And here comes Christ and radically saves us. And says, I got a plan for you. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you hope in the future. But the pictures we have up is from 1973. And we're still looking and observing those pictures. Wow. I am a victim, huh? Yeah, this is, this is who I am. These are, this is my hall of shame. We got to shift. You'll never produce what God wants to produce with those pictures hanging up in your heart. Heaven and hell are fighting for your imagination. I remember when I was working, I was a grant writer. I was working in my office. And I would daydream. I mean, I'd be in the middle of the day working, and all of a sudden, I'd catch myself. I'd, this film would play. And I was daydreaming where I would see crowds of people, and I was prophesying over them. And I'd have to snap back, oh, I gotta finish this. And I'd keep working on the gray, and then all of a sudden there I was again. And it would happen all the time. And I was like, Lord, why am I so distracted? Little did I know it was a vision from the Holy Ghost. He was giving me new pictures, a new movie to watch, saying, I want your imagination because if you can see it, you can be it. And God is saying, I want to give you another picture of yourself. I got a camera in heaven. I sent my camera crew. They got new pictures of you, and they want to plaster these pictures over the old ones. Why hasn't the prophetic word come to pass? You got the old pictures still up. Let's change it. Old pictures must be taken down. Let's go to the next one. What else must we do? Pictures and what we see end up being what we think about. We got to change our old thoughts. You had the pictures up, that's what you see. So this is what you think about yourself. 
And the word says in Romans 12 too, be not conformed to this world, because this is how the world does it. They see themselves in those pictures and that's what they think of themselves. But the word says, be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind. Change your thoughts. Change the pictures, change the thoughts. Doesn't the word of God say, my thoughts are, let me come over here. Doesn't the word of God say, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts? God's thoughts are higher than what you think of yourself. In other words, God doesn't think about you the way you think about you. He's got better thoughts and higher thoughts. So when we change the picture, we also begin to renew our minds and think God's thoughts about us, and we believe it. I had a lady once in my ministry time. I prophesied over her, and I said, the Lord says he gave you the ability to teach. And she says, no, that's a wrong word. I said, well, okay. I backed up and said, God, did I miss it? He confirmed it. I said, no, no, I don't believe I, I got a wrong word. I believe God's saying he gave you the ability to teach. You have a teacher's anointing. And she said, now I know you missed it. Okay, well, God bless you. And I moved on to the next person. At the end of the night, somebody said, you know, Hector, that young lady you prophesied to who told you you missed it, do you know what she does for a living? I was like, no, what does she do? What does she do? She's a teacher. She's a teacher. And she had the nerve to tell me that it was a wrong word. Now, why did she think that didn't fit? I don't know. Maybe the, she was believing the enemy's lies about her. Maybe she thought she was a bad teacher and that was terrible at her job or however the enemy was trying to get his thoughts, but she was believing another report. She was not believing what God was saying about her. And tonight, we sit in the house of God, we sing worship songs, and sometimes we don't believe him. You know what God wants from you? To believe him. So when he says something about you, that you say, I believe you, God. I don't understand it, but I believe you. If you said it, I believe you. Like the lady who wouldn't leave me alone about prophecy. I was like, what? Eventually, I came around. I was like, okay, God, amen, so be it. Change your pictures, change your thoughts. Let's go to the next one. Change your beliefs. Why is that so important? Change what you see, change what you think. So now, your beliefs begin to shift. That has to happen because Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The posters in your heart of you being a victim eventually gave you the belief that you were a victim. That's why God says we got to change all this. That's why God told Abraham, no, 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 Abram, I got to change your name and give you a new name because your name now says father of many nations. He didn't have one kid. God says, I'm giving you a name so you can think about, that's how I think about you. Oh, and by the way, I want you, every time you look down, look at the sand. If you can count the sand, you're going to be able to count how many kids you got. He didn't have one son yet. Oh, and look up at the stars. If you can count the stars, you'll be able to count your family. Not one kid yet. God gave him pictures to change his thoughts, to change his beliefs, because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Some of you seated in this room, God is saying, I've called you not to just bear fruit. I've called you to bear much fruit, to have an orchard of fruit. And in order to get that done, let's change some things. Change your pictures, change your thoughts, change your beliefs. And now eventually, how do you know you've made the, all those shifts and you can work with God? Because this is the final result. Let's go here to the next one. Eventually, you change your words. You can come to church and put on your church mask and smile. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. But as soon as a problem comes up and there's pressure put on you, whatever comes out of your mouth is who you really are. It's what you really believe. It's what you really think. So what we need to do is go through the process of metamorphosing with the Holy Spirit. So the pictures are down, the new pictures are up. The thoughts have changed. Now we're thinking God's thoughts. The beliefs, beliefs have changed. So we're believing different about ourselves. And now we talk differently about ourselves because Jesus said that whoever says to the mountain, be removed and cast in the sea and doesn't doubt in his heart and believes those things that they'll come to pass, he'll have whatever he says. You have to realize you are a portal. Heaven and hell are fighting over you because you can express on the earth. And God wants you to use your words to express God. And the enemy's trying to get a hold of what you believe and what you see so he can use your words to express hell on earth.
What are you producing? Whether you know this or not, you're prophesying all day long. The words of your mouth are coming forth. They're prophesying what's in your heart all day long. So what do you do when you've... I can tell you, you're looking at someone who used to wear the victimhood shirt. That was me. Victimhood. I'll never be. I'm not good enough. My brothers and sisters all had trophies. My mom had a trophy case. I had none. I'd look at all their trophies, baseball, basketball. My sister won every single spelling bee. And I'd sit there going, they were overachievers. They always made me invisible. Victimhood. I resented them for it. But God began to work in my heart and work in my life to change how I saw myself, change how I thought about myself and get me in alignment with him so that I can begin to produce what he called me to produce. And now I can bless my brothers and be proud of them. I can bless my sister and be proud of her and her accomplishments because I am who God's called me to be. They can't produce what God's called me to produce. When I go places, I used to work at the DMV and I was trying to be business-like and people were like, you prophesied a word that saved my life. I'm like, I'm at work, not here. (laughs) But it warmed my heart to hear these praise reports, the praise reports we get all the time because I let the Holy Spirit work with me to metamorphose and shift and change so that I could produce. Two more thoughts, two more slides with you, then we're going to go into a time of ministry. Is this speaking to someone tonight? (laughs) Oh, it's time for the new. God wants you to produce and step into that place that he has for you more than, I believe, than what even, more than what we want. His desire for us is greater than even our own desire. But we've got, there's work that we you know, what, it, what God is looking for is, is, is the yes in our heart. Okay, God, I'm willing. Let's do this work. Let me align right with you. Show me what you want to see. Give me a new vision of myself. Give me a dream. Give me a vision. Speak to me. Show me a new picture. And God will be faithful to do that. Let's go to the next one. What time is it in the body of Christ? I like to work in the element of time because time is so prophetic. Time is so prophetic. We're getting ready. We're ending. We're already almost, you know, we're, I can't believe we're already on the 12th of August. Can you believe it? I'm a fall person. Barbie's like rolling her eyes. I'm like, fall's almost here. She's like, honey, no, we're still in summer. Because I want pumpkin spice. I want apple cider. I want, I, that's, I'm a fall guy. And then I was driving over here tonight. And I was like, man, this is going to be a beautiful drive in the fall. <laughs> I'm just seeing foliage. And you guys got apple farms and all that out here? All right. We're coming back this way for for the fall. I love the fall. But here we are almost at the end of the year now. I don't care if you follow our regular calendar. That's fine. If you follow just our regular calendar, you know, uh, December's not too far. And, you know, we're getting ready to next year, 2022, right? New year. It's still the same thing. I like to look at the Hebraic calendar because the Hebraic calendar is so prophetic. And it always gives a prophetic picture of, of what we're going into. And uh, so in the Hebraic calendar, you know, we're in the 20s. We're in the 2021, next year, 2022. They're in the 5780s. Isn't that weird, right? But they're in the 5780s. And their numbers and their calendars every year has a picture and a, a number that's always very prophetic. So this year in the Hebraic calendar, it was very telling. We are ending the year, this year is considered the year of breaking bloodline curses. So this has been a time you should have, everyone in this room, by now, this year, you should have had God dealing with you about things in the family that need to change. That is exactly the time that we are in. Why? Because according to the the Hebraic calendar, we go into the new year in the beginning of September. Actually, on Labor Day, that's when they go into their new year. That's when they go into 5782. They're a little ahead of us. So according to the Hebraic calendar, we're going into the new year of launching the new houses of the future. Now, what does that mean? For those who have participated with God to cut off bloodline curses, to clean our lives up, to agree with God, to change the pictures, change our thinking and align, to let the new us begin to emerge, this is going to be a year of God launching you into new things. 
so that you can begin to produce. God is always looking to produce. So what a powerful picture, even according to the Hebraic calendar that we're in, the, the year we're going into, a, a year of God doing a new thing. The houses of the future. You're a house of God. I'm a house of God. A new house. A new identity. The new identity in Christ emerging so God can launch me into new things. That's, the, that's what God is after. Getting you into the new. God bless you. Amen. Let's go to the last slide. What's it going to be? You have a decision tonight. Are you going to metamorphose? You're going to let the Holy Spirit finish working in your heart? You're going to believe God? You're going to believe the good report that God has something great in store for you? Are you going to think, see, believe, and speak differently to match your identity in Christ? What's God's dream for you? What is it that God has in, in, in store for you? You know, if he has a dream for you, it's possible for you to know what it is. That's why the word of God says, do not, be, do not walk as foolish, but know what the will of the Lord is. That's what the Bible says. You have to know the will of God for your life. What is it that you have in store for me? What's God's dream for you? What's your promised land? And then we, we need to have a picture of that. Hallelujah. Ooh, what was that? Come on, Jesus. Let's add some turbo on that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I don't know if I ever shared this here. Barbie and I were invited to take over uh, the pastorate of a church. Have I shared this here? It was a beautiful church in Penfield, New York. I was ministering there on a Sunday, and afterwards they said, Hector, we uh, want you to know that we're looking for a new pastor. I knew that. And they said, and you're among our candidate list. And I was like, say what? I said, yeah, we're considering you. I said, why, why would you do that? Well, because we all love you. And I said, well, I appreciate that, but you haven't even asked me if I'm interested. Well, we just thought we'd inform you that you're in our, on our candidate list. And we're going to reach out to you because we want to meet with you. And I'm thinking, what in the world? So I left there kind of laughing at it, you know, laughing it off. But then afterwards, I thought, well, you know, it's a great facility. It's not too far from my house. I have a lot of conferences and events. Maybe this is God. And my mind is running with this. And I was like, hey, this, you know, God's got a dream for me to expand and grow. And this might be it. So I'm getting ready to meet with them. I'm getting excited about this. Oh, and then I remembered something. I said, wait a minute. I better check with God. Because he's the one that has a dream for my life. And I have to do and fulfill the dream he has for me. I have thoughts and my mind will let me go and do it. But I better check with him. Because it is power. The, the word says, I can't be ignorant. I can't be like the foolish. I have to know the will of God. In order to produce good fruit that honors God, I have to know his will. So that I do what God's called me to do and I'm not off distracted somewhere else. So I did what I do when I need to know. And I'm sharing this with you because some of you need to know what God's dream is for you. Okay? So we have the mind, the word of God says, we have the mind of Christ. It's right here in my spirit. I have the mind of Christ. But my carnal mind is the one that is speaking loud. So I got to do something to shut this down and let the mind of Christ manifest. So I went to the basement. I told my wife, I'm unavailable. I went down there and I said, Lord, and I make these declarations. Father, I've got the mind of Christ. And I thank you. I need to know if this is part of your dream for me. So I'm going to pray in the spirit as I pray mysteries. I'm going to pray in tongues and pray in mysteries. And the word says, if you pray in tongues, ask for an interpretation. So Lord, I'm going to believe you for an interpretation. Because I need to know what to do. So I went down there and I was a that I was praying in the spirit. When you're praying in the spirit, it's like you're dropping your bucket in the well of revelation. Now notice that's like fasting. Because you know when you fast, your body's like, I'm hungry, eat. And you're telling your body, be quiet, I'm seeking God. Well, when you pray in the spirit, your mind immediately starts going, How long is this gonna take? How long has it been? You're like, it's been five minutes. And your mind is like, this isn't going to work. And all, I had to press in there and say, shut up. How much longer? Shut up. And really just shut myself in and seek. And I think I was praying in the spirit for about two hours. The atmosphere sh shifted and changed, and I'm, I'm sensing the glory of God. I'm in this place. And this audible voice from the inside of me. Not by might, 
not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I knew right there. He said to me, you have your answer. You'll know it by my spirit. In Jesus' name, I have my answer. Because remember, I got the mind of Christ. So do you. You have, the Bible says, you have the anointing of the Holy One and you know all things. It's in you. You just got to know how to tap into the mind of Christ and get your answer and not call Pastor Marty all the time and Ryan, but tap into the mind of Christ and get that answer from the spirit realm that's inside of you. So he said, by my spirit, you'll know. So I met them for coffee. And after I met them for coffee, to talk about the next part of the process, as soon as he opened his mouth, he said, Hector, we were talking right there. Something went, Ehh. and I knew it right there. I was like, this is a no. It's a huge no. We were thinking that we want to interview you now with the rest of the board. I said, I'm going to save you some time, brother. My answer is no. I love you guys. I want to stay connected with you guys, but I'm not your pastor. Who praise the Lord, he saved me. Because my mind was saying, oh, you could use the building, you could have conferences. Do you know the problems I would have gotten into if I went off of God's will for my life and got into something else God didn't have for me? Do you know the problems God spared me from? Do you know why sometimes we have problems? Because we get off of God's dreams for us and we get into something else. God has a dream for you. And he wants you to know what it is so that you can get into the middle of that dream he has for you, which you're going to absolutely love, by the way. He's going to give you a call that fits you well. And you're going to be able to produce good fruits in your new identity. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this word tonight. I thank you for everyone that has heard the message of this word. You told me to bring it. You told me to share it. Now I ask, Lord, that you would cause faith to arise in our hearts, to connect with you, to hear from you, and to decide to complete the process to shift into the new. We know you want us to produce. We know you want us to manifest from the good treasure of our hearts to bring forth good things that glorify you. Speak to us, Lord. Meet us where we're at and help us walk with you and complete this process so that on the other side of it, you are pleased with what we're producing. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And that's the walk of the believer. Our walk is to know what he wants, to align with him, and produce. He deserves good fruit that bring him glory. So that when you stand before God one day, he'll look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Amen. Amen. Words we all want to hear. Thank you for, for coming up. Praise God. City Church, well done. You're in the footprint of God. You've left, you're talking about influence tonight. I was like, brother, that footprint I saw was huge, enormous, beyond what you've even seen. I, I think it was, it was way outside of this region. It was too big for, for it to be all of Batavia. It was much bigger than that. It was enormous. And because it's enormous, God's expanding this ministry. And that's why he's saying, I don't care how, what you hear out there, do not step back in the outreach. Do not step back. Do not shrink down at all. But I'm going to give you a gift of faith for resources. So you're going to dream bigger. You're going to dream broader. It's radical. In Jesus' mighty name. Can we say amen to that? Where was the gentleman that was playing that base. That was you? Stand up, brother. I saw the Lord put like a transparent paper over you and he was kind of tracing you. But I saw you as you were, but he was going bigger and drawing you as this. And he finished and was like, yeah, that's it. And the Lord says, you're a giant in the faith. You're one who believes God. And he's pleased with how you believe God. And the Lord says to you, well done. And I, I even see that God is going to begin to show you. I saw you in the word connecting some dots and saying, oh, this connects with this and this. And you were just so excited with what you were learning. And I, I sense that God's going to give you the ability to share with those around you. Your influence is going to expand. God says, I'm going to cause you and, and really give you new pictures of see, you seeing yourself ministering and sharing what God is showing you. There's going to be an ability to share from the word with ease 
like nothing, like never before. There's going to be just coming, that's the word, a flow. I prophesy the flow that's going to just bubble up from the inside as God begins to give you fresh revelation. You're just going to share that with others. Amen. And the Lord says, even your checkbook, God says, uh, you're, you're just going to be amazed when you see how I'm going to bless you financially, says the Spirit of God. You are not going to go without that. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to expand resources to you even in this season. And I just see uh, boxes left at your doorstep and you're like, where is this coming from? God says, that is me. I know your address. I know how to get it to you. God says, I will bless you, says the Spirit of God. So as you continue to stand in a spirit of faith and believe me, watch what I'm going to do for you, says the Spirit of the Lord, because I've heard your cry. I see your heart, and I'm doing this for you in this season, says the Spirit of the Lord. Isn't he good? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Denim jacket, pink shirt back there. I think that's a denim jacket. Would you stand up? May I minister to you? What's your name? Father, I thank you for Rachel. Rachel, I don't care how you see yourself. I don't care what you've believed about yourself in the past. God says, I've given you a healing heart, a heart to heal others. I've given you a heart to be a blessing to other people. The Lord says, I've created you to be a good friend to people. I've created you to have a listening ear and an empathetic heart. And at times, people have taken advantage of your gift. But the Lord says, I'm going to show you how to manage that gift because you will be like medicine to those around you. I'm going to heal your heart, says the Spirit of God. Things that daggers that have been in there. God says, I'm removing with my surgical hand, says the Spirit of God. It's like tonight you're going in Holy Spirit operation. He says, I'm healing your heart from the inside out. And pains and things that were there, they're gone. God says, I'm dealing with that now, says the Spirit of God. But I'm going to cause a healing stream to flow in your life, through your life, for others. For I'm going to give you words that are just going to come bubbling up like prophetic words that are going to heal other people around you. You're like a nurse in the spirit and you're going to have the right words for people to help them move on into the next phase of life. Amen. And the Lord says, I'm with you. I just see this, um, the imagery that God is giving me. You know how, what, what we say when we have our pet, our dog is kind of like man's best friend, right? Uh, I, I see that just around you. And I hear the Lord saying, uh, that's kind of what I'm showing you, my loyalty to you. I am. I stick closer to you than you even realize. I will not leave you nor forsake you, says the Spirit of God. But I want that healing gift to flow. And watch how I'm going to bring even mothers of the faith that are going to help you advance in this season of your life. You've not seen anything yet, young lady. You've not seen anything. For God says, I desire to bless you. I desire to increase the joy in your life and increase the, the the happiness that you're that you're experiencing. God says, watch and see how I will do this in you and through you, says the Spirit of God. Let's say amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, this family over here, are you is this a married couple over here in the end? Would you stand up? Can I minister to you? Would that be all right? Yes, please. So the Lord says to the two of you, I'm answering questions for your future. I'm bringing solutions of peace for you for your future. Uh, and I hear the Lord saying that he's, he's drawing close to you in this season of your life so that you can know that he is ever present, ever watching over the two of you. Uh, your, your home is a home of peace, a home of joy. But I, I sense that God is going to expand your territory, if that makes any sense. I sense that God is going to add more to you and bring more to you so you can realize, wow, look at what God has done. There's going to be a testimony that's going to come out of the two of you in this season to show God's goodness because he smiles over you. He smiles over your home. And he he says, I'm going to expand you in this season and, and just do, he's just going to do something that you're not even asking, but it's something that's going to be, you're going to receive with joy. Amen. So I release that to you because the Lord loves the two of you. Man of God, the Lord would say to you, he's even going to bring you around men. I, I sense uh, that there's a, um, I'm just going to, I get imagery a lot. So I'm just going to say what I see. Uh, you know, God's even going to 
cause you guys to be comfortable in your home, to open up your home. I, I see like football parties. I see like people coming over and just connecting with you guys. There's a, a social aspect to who you are. And through that, God is going to use you to love on people. God is going to use you to be a blessing to others. People that you would not normally connect with uh, in the natural. God's going to bring them even through football parties or whatever. But you, you're going to see how God is going to connect you with key people. And it's going to really be a blessing. God really has a call for you to, a call to love others and be a blessing to others and be pastoral with others and, and encourage others. So there's a gift of encouragement on the two of you. There's also a generosity gift. God says, I've called you to, you know, there's, you, you have no issues with being generous. God, as you continue to flow in your generosity, God is going to multiply uh, the income for you, says the Spirit of God. Can we say amen? Football parties, huh? Hallelujah. It's so easy to evangelize. You know that? Well, I'm talking to an evangelistic church, but it's so easy to evangelize. I mean, my goodness, a football party. I remember my wife was invited to one. Uh, this gentleman got this enormous screen and man, there were so many people there. And uh, how easy just to connect, you know, when everybody's defenses are down and just share the love of Christ. It's just so cool. Uh, so amen to that. Uh, this lady back here with the shades on your head, would you stand up? What's your name? I'm sorry? Kathy. Kathy, you've been, you've been a rock for many others. You've been a strength for many others. You've been an intercessor for many others. And you've had people's back, sometimes without even a thank you. And sometimes when you pour yourself out for the Lord, you can kind of get burned out. And the Lord says, I'm coming to you this season and I'm renewing and I'm refilling your oil says the Spirit of God. I'm giving you a new anointing for a new season, says the Spirit. And even the way you prayed and interceded, God says, I'm shifting and I'm upgrading your weaponry. I'm upgrading you. And it'll be like before you'd have to fast and pray for something. God says, no, it's not going to take all the toiling and all the work that it took before. It's just that posture of faith and you're going to see me moving on your behalf. Uh, the, the phone ministry is going to continue. People are going to call you. People are going to want prayer. People are going to want encouragement. People are going to want scripture. People are going to want all these different things. And the Lord says, uh, that's right. I'm going to have angels go and cause people to call you. And <sighs> so that you can encourage them with your encouragement ministry, says the Spirit of God. But know this, the Lord says to you, there's also the evangelist in you. And God says, that I'm going to send souls to you in this season that they're ready. They're ready. And, and as those opportunities come, you're going to discern it and see it. God says, this is going to be the time. Others have planted, others have watered. And God says, I'm going to start now sending you to bring it in, to bring them in, bring them in. So start bringing in the harvest, woman of God. For the Lord says, I'm calling you to that. And in the end, you're going to see and realize, I see you teaching like you kind of have a recipe. This is the recipe for honoring God with your ministry. It's almost like, you know, a cup of prayer, a cup of fasting, a cup of, and just wisdom in your life from your ministry. God says, you're also going to have a group that comes around you that you're going to uh, love and share, and you're going to really share from your heart. Uh, and God says, watch and see what I do with that. I'm going to put fire on that, and it's going to take off, says the Spirit of the Lord. Can we say amen? All right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't he good? Praise God. My camera friend is here tonight. How you doing? What's his name? Ryan? Oh, that's pretty easy. How you doing, Ryan? Good to see you, buddy. For the Lord says to you, I've called you and I've put a leadership gift on the inside of you at a young age. And the Lord says, you have ministry on the inside of you. Uh, there is, you're, you're, a you're going to be a marketplace minister. You're going to know the house of the Lord. You're going to know how to preach and teach. And you're going to know how to divide the word uh, correctly. For God says, I've called you at an early age and I've put the mantle and the call on your life. And there's a heart in you for justice, for what is right. 
And God says, I'm going to use you to be a voice of what is correct and what is what is just. So there's a wisdom beyond your years that I will use as the Spirit of God in this community and beyond. Let me just say, I don't know why I see this over your life. I'm going to prophesy it, but God says, uh, Florida, I just see Florida over him. Uh, I see Florida will be a key state for you and something that you will interact with a lot, uh, but God is going to bless you uh, with one leg in ministry, one leg in the marketplace. So I prophesy that over you in Jesus' mighty name. And what's your name? Andrew, Mr. Creativity, Mr. See It and Fix It, Mr. Has Ideas. You're a dreamer. You're a planner. God says, I'm going to give you creativity to dream and plan and draw it and sketch it out and build it. For the Lord says, I'm going to give you a gift to build, see it, and problem solve and bring it into manifestation. You're going to be a man of your word. You're going to be a man that says, there's a better way to do it. Let's do it this way. So God is going to launch you in that and cause you to be a Joseph in your generation. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. I think I have one more. Would you stand up? Yeah, you're back here on the end here. Yes, you. Uh Hallelujah. I think that motorcycle was for you. There's there's an edge. (laughs) There's an edge on your life. There's an edge that God has. Uh, You're not... You're not afraid to approach others and really just share. And you're not afraid to be bold. There's a boldness and a courage that God's put on the inside of you. And I'm not going to let any of that go to waste, says the Spirit of God. But I'm going to launch that through you and cause you to just have these bold conversations in the right moments, in the right times. And through you, I'm going to save many that are on the verge of disaster, on the verge of suicide, on the verge of taking their own lives because you have a testimony. God says, I'm going to launch you as one to minister to others with what you've gone through as you've received freely give freely, says the Spirit of God, for I launch you with boldness and courage, says the Spirit of the Lord, to release what I say through you. And a spirit of prophecy will overtake you. And you're going to say, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I got to say it. And God's going to use that to minister to the multitudes. So the Lord says, don't wait anymore. You're not waiting on me. I've been waiting on you. And I say, as we connect tonight, the Lord says, you're launched in a new season, says the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow, isn't he good? I rejoice with the Lord. I rejoice with what God is doing in this house. Thank you, Lord. And as I pass this over to Pastor Marty, remember, we got work to do, guys. This is just the beginning. We have a lot of work to do. The kingdom of God, God is waiting for, when we get aligned with him, let me say it this way. When we get aligned with him, each and every one of us on an individual level, watch and see how God's going to advance his kingdom in the nations of the world. And the Lord showed me this a couple of years ago. I saw camera crews fighting to try to get somewhere first because they knew miracles were going to go down. I saw camera crews from news media trying to get somewhere first because they knew the ecclesia was ministering and miracles were always taking place. So they were trying to get there first to cover it first. So we're going to get to the level of seeing God's kingdom advancing and manifesting on the earth like it never has before. For that to happen, we have a decision to make. So hopefully you've made yours. I've made mine. Let's produce good fruit. Let's move forward. Pastor Marty, thank you. Good night. God bless you. Would you stand with us tonight? If you receive this word tonight, just lift your hand to heaven. surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all Father that's our prayer tonight that you seal this word in our hearts we thank you tonight for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit in this place. Father, we just pray your blessing over Hector and Barbie tonight, that your hand would be on them. Father, that you'd open doors. Father, before great men, and we thank you for it tonight. Thank you for your voice, Father. Thank you for your spirit on them in a profound 
in an amazing way. We'll thank you for it tonight. In Jesus' name, would you say amen? Didn't you have a great time tonight? Come on, give the Lord a hand tonight. And fall's coming, and you're coming back. Amen? Amen. Hey, this Sunday, we're going to have a time in here. We got some great stuff planned. 8.30, 10 a.m. And 12, he's excited about it, so should you should be too. 12 noon at St. Anthony's. Have a great night. We love you so much. Thanks for coming tonight.